Hi, I'm Ariel with Lowell Observatory, and here's what's in the sky this August. Jupiter and Saturn will be visible for essentially the whole night throughout the month. Saturn will be in opposition on August 2nd, and Jupiter will be in opposition on August 19th. Opposition happens when a planet and the Sun are on exactly opposite sides of the sky. On these dates, the planet will rise almost exactly when the Sun sets. This also coincides with when the planet is closest to Earth and appears at its largest and brightest in the sky. So August 2nd will be the best time this year to observe Saturn and August 19th will be the best time to observe Jupiter. Jupiter will move from the constellation Aquarius to Capricorn and Saturn will remain in Capricorn. Mars and Mercury will both be pretty close to the Sun throughout the month and will both be nearly impossible to see. Venus will be slightly farther from the Sun and slightly more visible, but will still be extremely low towards the western horizon at dusk and will set not long after sunset. This month's new moon will be on August 8th and the full moon will be on August 22nd. This month, the Perseid meteor shower will peak. These meteors will appear to radiate from the constellation Perseus. This is one of the best meteor showers of the year, especially from the northern hemisphere. Meteors from it will be visible through most of the month, especially towards the middle of the month. At its peak, it can produce dozens of shooting stars each hour. The spring constellations of Ursa Major, Boetes, and Virgo are setting earlier and earlier, and Leo is gone from the night sky. The sky is now dominated by summer constellations. Among the most famous of these are the stars of the Summer Triangle, including Vega and the constellation Lyra the Harp, Deneb and the constellation Cygnus the Swan, and Altair and the constellation Aquila the Eagle. Scorpius the Scorpion rises in the south earlier each night as well, containing the bright star Antares. Rising after Scorpius is another zodiac constellation, Sagittarius. And the general direction of Scorpius and Sagittarius is the core of our Milky Way galaxy. The disk of the galaxy cuts right through the Summer Triangle, and the constellation of Cygnus the Swan can be imagined to be swimming along it. The constellations of the autumn sky will be rising earlier and earlier. The easiest of these to see is the constellation Cassiopeia, which makes a W shape as it rises in the northeastern sky. Cassiopeia opens towards Polaris, giving us a way to find the North Star when the Big Dipper isn't up. Near Cassiopeia are the constellations of Perseus, Pegasus, and Andromeda. During the Northern Hemisphere's summer, the night sky faces the disk of the Milky Way, providing a wealth of targets for binoculars. Sagittarius has this teapot shape within it, and just above the spout of the teapot is the large Sagittarius star cloud, a region of the sky rich with stars, and above that large star cloud is the Lagoon Nebula, a bright star-forming region in our galaxy. Above the lid of the teapot is the small Sagittarius star cloud, which appears smaller than the larger cloud but has even more stars, and above that small cloud is the Swan Nebula, or Omega Nebula, another of the sky's brightest star-forming regions. A bit later in the evening are a few more objects to look at through binoculars. Look halfway in between Cassiopeia and Perseus to find the Perseus double star cluster. If you bisect the wide angle formed by Andromeda's brightest stars and follow that line just a bit up, you can find the Andromeda galaxy. The summer sky is rich with sights for telescopes as well. For example, M13, a globular star cluster, can be found in Hercules' torso. You're able to see hundreds of thousands of stars bound together by gravity, creating a glob of stars. A modest telescope will allow you to see the Ring Nebula, a planetary nebula between the two stars opposite Vega and the constellation of Lyra. In general, the region around Sagittarius is just as amazing with binoculars as it is with a telescope. This month's deep sky challenge is the Blue Snowball Nebula. This is a planetary nebula or the remnants of a medium-massed star after it ran out of fuel. An unusually high concentration of oxygen gives this nebula its beautiful blue color. This nebula can be found north of the Great Square of Pegasus. One way to find it is to imagine the northern two stars of the Great Square as the corners of an isosceles triangle, and the nebula will be near the third corner. It's also about a third of the way over from two somewhat faint stars, Iota and Omicron Andromedae. The blue snowball will appear smaller than some other planetary nebulae and may even be confused for a star if you don't look carefully, but I think it's a really fun object to search for. That's all for August's Mars Hill Almanac, and until next time, happy stargazing.